to an, another edition of Morning Market Call. I'm your host, Sabrina Beck, and I'm here with Ken Hall, who is the director or the current chair of the retail group for the marketing program um, of the advisory board for the marketing program here at the Marriott School, and also the former chief marketing officer and chief merchandising officer of PetSmart. So, Ken, thank you for so, uh, so much for coming and uh, talking with us today. My, my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Um, so when I think about retail, I think about cashiering and having to check out and work on Sundays. Why would a BYU student want to work in the retail environment? You know, it, it's a great question because when uh, we're on here recruiting on campus, we get that same question all mm -hmm. the time. Um, you know, am I going to have to work every Sunday? Am I going to have to be a cashier or stock shelves? And to be honest, retail is so much more than that. Absolutely, there are wonderful careers for, for individuals who want to uh, work on a store floor and work directly with customers. But I, I like to think about retail, and especially for some of the careers that would be appropriate for students coming out of BYU, as corporate retail. Jobs that would be appropriate for people to work in in a corporate setting. And within corporate retail, there are a variety of different departments and a variety of different jobs. There's a whole field in marketing that you could go into, or mm -hmm. you could be a buyer or a merchant and go into a merchandising department. You could work in strategic planning or real estate, uh, so many different fields that you could go into um, with a, a career in retail. Okay, and now what is the difference between, uh, no, you, were, you worked with PetSmart, yeah. Um, what is the difference between uh, doing people retail and pet retail? <laughs> so we're working, working for a pet retailer is a little bit different. Um, a lot of the same principles would be the same though. It's really understanding who your customer is. And for the case of PetSmart, that understanding not only goes to the person who's the pet owner, who you know, PetSmart calls the, the pet parent or the pet enthusiast, mm -hmm. but also understanding those unique needs that their pets would have as well. So it's not just understanding what a pet enthusiast would want to have, but also what are the unique situations that that dog is going to be experiencing uh, that, that would be relevant to the owner. So I'll give you a great example. Um, if you go back 30 or 40 years, a lot of pets used to live in the barnyard and they were outside animals. But today, um, those pets have migrated from the barn to then they came to the back door where we used to feed them. And somehow when we weren't looking, they came inside the house. And now they're upstairs and under the sheets in the bed with us. And so the dog that actually sleeps in bed with you is very different than the dog that lives in the barn. And you want that pet to act differently, to behave differently, to smell differently, to feel differently. And so as we, as we deal with pets and their owners, we really are trying to understand those unique consumer needs uh, that are related to owning a pet and have to understand the pet in addition to the actual pet parent. Okay, so now when you're working with uh, your target market and looking at the customer and going into segmentation, um, how do you go about that when you have to take the pet into consideration? So uh, a great example for what we used to do at uh -huh. PetSmart, um, we looked at pet owners and specifically evaluated the relationship that that pet parent would have with their pet. And then through a series of questions and interviews, we're able to identify five different segments of pet owners, all based upon how they interacted with their pet. So there was the pet owner who looked at their pet and said, you know what, I'm a very busy individual. My pet is just another task. I just have to take care of that pet somehow. It's just another errand that I need to deal with. All the way up to the person whose pet was really their four-legged child and everything they did to treat that pet would be just like treating that, uh, that dog or cat as if it was a two-legged child. And they needed the best education and the best food and the best care. And so as we looked at segmentation, we really tried to focus on that relationship that the pet owner, the pet parent would have with their pet. And by doing that, bring the pet into that customer segmentation analysis. Okay, now as the chief marketing officer and the chief merchandising officer, what was the most fun task or activity that you got to do with your job? So th there were lots of things and uh, Pet PetSmart's a wonderful place to work for. Uh, one of the things that we did uh, when I was chief marketing officer um, was to really look at the brand positioning of PetSmart as a company, as a retailer. 
And the way that the, the logo was even uh, written at that time, it wasn't clear whether it was Pet Smart or Pet Smart. And through doing a lot of research with consumers as well as understanding who we wanted to be as a company, we decided that it was very important that consumers knew that we had great solutions and answers for them and for their pets. And that we weren't just a, a big box retailer with lots of stuff. And so we decided to move the company from being PetSmart, M-A-R-T, to being PetSmart, S-M-A-R-T. And in that brand repositioning, it involved everything that we did. We had to relook at our assortment and make changes. We, we completely relooked at our logo and made it very clear that it was Pet Smart by changing the colors. So the first three letters were one color, P-E-T, and Smart was a separate color. Um, we did a, a large integrated branding campaign and shot television commercials and online advertising all to communicate those new benefits. And so um, really just fun to be able to, to take a brand, in this case a retail brand, PetSmart, understand those underlying consumer needs and then change the way that we did business to really meet those consumer needs in a way that they really appreciated. So how well was this new positioning received by, by the pet parent? Were they really happy? Well, you know, the, the, we have tons of customer research mm -hmm. at the time that said this is exactly what they were looking for and what they wanted. But at the end of the day, the thing that made the most difference to us was we had more customers deciding to drive past a grocery store, drive mm -hmm. past a mass merchandising store, and come into PetSmart, shop more, and buy more there. And, and from our point of view, we felt that we were very well able to meet their needs in a way that was unique that they couldn't have them met any other way. So very exciting to do. Cool. Um, Ken, retail sounds like so much fun. What kind of background does a student need to have? Is there a specific area that if, if someone were interested in going to retail that they really should focus on? So to, to be honest, the way that I like to think about retail, in, a, in one way it's really being a general manager running your own business but using someone else's money. And so those types of skill sets that would train you to be a good manager um, and to run a business would be those skill sets that are going to make you great in retail. Uh, my personal background, I graduated uh, from BYU with a chemical engineering degree. Um, and I don't know how many yeah. uh, chemical engineering graduates from BYU actually spent a significant part of their career shooting TV commercials. But having a career in retail allowed me that opportunity to do everything from shoot television commercials to travel throughout Asia and set up uh, sourcing and working with factories to be able to to bring the best products at the lowest cost to being able to um, you know evaluate uh, large strategic decisions for the company all because uh, those are the types of questions that retailers have to ask and so I would say you want to you want an education that teaches you to be curious. Um, you want an education that would give you the, the financial ability to understand business and how to make um, good financial decisions. But then at the end of the day as well, in retail, you get a report card every single day because you have sales that come in every morning. And so you really want to be able to have a personality that says, I've got a great idea. I'm going to figure out how to make this idea happen tomorrow and then I'm going to look and see did customers respond and did the sales come through that I thought were going to come through. So someone who really has that desire of getting into the details, making it happen and then you know likes getting a, a report card every day about how you're doing. Wow, that sounds amazing. I am totally sold Good. On, on working in retail and I hope that uh, our viewers uh, have gained a lot more insight about what retail is all about. Ken, I would love to thank you for coming on and, and talking with us today and hope that you have a, a safe trip back. Um, and thank you, and please join us again next time for another edition of Morning Market Call. MMC is brought to you by the Marriott School of Management in association with the Brigham Young University Department of Communications. MMC is made possible by a generous donation from Larry Tasjan and Gary Williams and is produced by Rhett Weller, Todd Castagna, Mason Chin, Joel Toby, and Sabrina Beck, with line producing by Beth and Brian Grimmett. For more information, find us on Twitter or at morningmarketcall.org.